So we've talked about how domain events are a record of important things that have happened. What if our domain model state was built entirely from domain events? What if we had no state change, zero, inside of our model unless it was triggered by a domain event? This is event sourcing. Event sourcing is the practice of building application state from domain events and from domain events alone. When we talk about application state, we're referring to the current condition of our products, our inventory, our orders, our member configurations, the comments that we've received, the history of rental cars that have been reserved, the history of changes that administrators and adjusters have made to your insurance policies. The combination of all of these things represents the state or the current state of our application. You don't generally event source all of your application state, but all of the state that is event sourced is completely derived from domain events. To illustrate this idea, let's imagine that we're selling something and multiple times during a single sale, we're going to need to know the status of our order. Traditionally, you might use an ORM and query an object by its ID. The ORM will go to the relational database and get the necessary state, then populate an object hierarchy with it. Finally, you'll get back the object, including its child objects, completely loaded with state from the database. When event sourcing, the model state is populated differently. To get the details of an order, we query for all of the domain events for that specific order ID and then apply each of the events one by one to the order model. Once all of the events are applied, the state of the order is up to date and we can get whatever details that we want from it. So where do these events come from? Let's look at the life cycle of an order. When someone wants to purchase something from us, we take the information about what they want to buy and who they are, and we place the order. Out of that comes the event, order was placed. When our team receives the order and verifies that it's valid and inventory is properly in stock, then the order was confirmed event is raised. When a customer makes a payment, the event payment was received is raised, and if the payment total matches the order total, then we raise the event order was completed. Finally, when we ship, we raise order was fulfilled. Here, you can see the life cycle of an order. Once the order is confirmed, the customer will be able to make a payment. Once the order is completed, our company will deliver our products and the customer can see that the order was fulfilled and maybe query as to the shipping status or whatever. So where do these events come from? Well, when we interact with the order model, we raise events. Whether those interactions are placing an order, confirming an order, submitting a payment, or fulfilling the order. These events are then immediately applied to the order, which updates the state of that instance. Let's look at this from the perspective of an object. First, we place an order. The first thing that happens is that the business rules regarding the order being placed are checked. If there's a problem, an exception is raised. If there's not, an event is raised within the order object named order was placed. Now at this point, the order state is essentially blank. The internals are unconfigured. However, when the order was placed event is raised, it's immediately applied to the order object. It's now that the customer ID is set inside the order. Now is when the order ID is set. Now is when the order timestamp is set. These things aren't configured in the constructor. Inside the object, the order ID is not being set to a private field. The logic inside the constructor exists to guard the business rules and then raise the correct event. When the event is raised, that moment, it's directly applied. Applying an event means that we update the object's state to reflect the change that the event brings. So with each event sourced entity, there's two types of fundamental behaviors. One, we ensure that the business rules are upheld, then we raise an event. Two, we apply the event to the model and update the internal state according to the event that was applied. Once the event is applied and the internal state is updated, you can then ask the object where in the order lifecycle it is. It's also important to note that our need to be able to guard business rules, also called invariance, necessitate this internal state. For example, it's easy to imagine that an order shouldn't be marked as complete, sent to the shipping department, unless we've received the appropriate amount of payment. How can we model that invariant? Let's imagine that we check the total amount of the payments made, 
Only if the payments total the exact amount that we expect can the order be marked as complete. So, every time a payment's received, we raise the event payment was received. At this point, we can have logic that represents the invariant. It checks the totals, and if everything lines up, it'll raise the order was completed event. But in order to verify that the order is complete, we'll have to know what payments have been made. So we need that state, or else we can't guard the invariant. Okay, but what about persistence? How do we persist and then load back event sourced models? Well, typically we have an ORM store an object into a relational database. Then we can query it back later by ID. When event sourcing, in order to store the state of an object, we pull the newly raised events out of it and store those in an event-only database called an event store. When we want to load that model up, we query back all of those events from the event store that relate to that model. Then we apply them one by one to an empty instance. As each event is applied, the state is modified. Once the last event has been applied to the object, the state is finally up to date. The only state that we're actually storing and querying are domain events. Domain events are the entirety of the persisted data. The event store is full of all of the occurrences for our application that are relevant to our business. They don't focus on technical concerns, but business concerns only. These domain events are rich and contain all of the necessary information to give the business a full snapshot of what occurred. They're rich enough that no state change in the event source components can occur without being applied from them. Interestingly, the most important thing about our domain model is that it guards the business rules and raises the correct events. That means that we are freely able to change the structure and behavior of our domain model code so long as it's still able to do so. This gives us great flexibility in refactoring and improving our technical implementation. Since the domain events are the critical component, our model code is just a detail. We can refactor freely without dealing with anything like database schema changes. So long as the applied events update a model state so that it will be able to guard business rules, then we're fine. Another nice benefit is that since we have this massive log of things that have happened, we have the ability to create logs and histories basically built in. Interestingly, event sourcing is the only architecture in which you don't lose data. In a typical model, state is updated and the intent is discarded. Later, you might look back and ask how the state got into the current condition. Often you can guess at it, but you might be entirely clueless. Did this result come from a bug? What precisely led to this state? Since domain events contain the intent and all necessary data to give that event context, and you will always persist all events, you simply never lose any data. Another interesting benefit is if you want to view the state of a system at a specific date and time. You can simply adjust your event querying so that it only pulls events from that date range. Then your models will reflect the state that they were in at that moment in time. It's like a time machine for your application state. This can be used in development to debug certain problems or for any number of other purposes. Which brings up an important point. What happens when there's a problem and an invalid event is raised? In a typical model, you might just directly modify the state of the system so that it's back on track. But with event sourcing, the domain events are conceptually immutable. You can't just change them without running into some trouble. But what's the alternative? Well, we really have only one resource to work with. We're working with domain events. So when domain events build the wrong state due to a wrong model or some kind of other bug, the solution is going to be to correct the state with new events. Imagine that a customer makes a payment that's too large. Maybe they made a typo in their bank transfer. Then you check to see if the payment was greater than or equal to the required amount. You might not have been considering the ramifications of an overpayment. Then the order is completed, shipped, and finally the customer realizes that there was a problem and your system has to be updated to reflect the fix. In this scenario, you might talk to the financial expert in your company and see what the right course of action is. It turns out that we need to refund the extra payment amount and send them a document showing the reimbursement. When working with domain events, you start to see your model problems in a similar way as the business sees its problems. You will consult with your company's financial expert in this case, 
and then directly implement a solution from their feedback. There's less emphasis on mapping the business's ideas to your code implementation and more emphasis on your code directly supporting the business's ideas. So you need to raise a new event for this order, something like order was overpaid. This triggers a remittance and the appropriate documentation is sent to the customer. When event sourcing, our systems are based on the ideas of the business, so our solutions reflect that. Our conceptual models of how the world works are fundamentally event-driven, so developers are often surprised that it can become easier to wrap your head around what needs to happen to fix event-driven systems once you become used to them. Now, imagine that our business requests that we add a new feature. They want to be able to query completed orders based on the customer's email address. How are we supposed to accomplish this? Do we rebuild every single order and run it through a filter to generate the final list? Well, yeah, that, that could work. Depending on the number of orders that we have, that might be a valid solution. Reconstituting state from domain events can be very fast, but okay, there's definitely going to be a point where this just doesn't work anymore. This is where we start bringing in ideas from CQRS. CQRS is a big topic which will have its own video, so we won't be going into depth about it here. But let's just touch on these ideas briefly so that we can get an idea about how event source models play into this requirement. So for each of these orders that have been completed, we have domain events called order was completed. Now imagine that we retrieve all of those from the event store and create a table in a relational database. The table would have the order ID, the customer's email, and whatever other information that we need to fulfill the requirement. Now we can create the system that our business is asking for. Now because we have this relational database table with all of the necessary information, we have an ideal way to build this feature for the business. Okay, but imagine that these domain events are fed into an event dispatcher every time they're stored. So a model change happens. We pull out the events, store them, and dispatch them. An event listener finds that order was completed event and says, okay, we have this relational table. Based on this order was completed event, we know that we need to add a new record. So we get all of the information for that order, the email address, etc., and add that record to the table. In this way, it's always kept up to date. Now, this is the essence of a read model. We'll get more into this in a later video, but no doubt you can already start to see how this event-driven approach has a lot of potential. To summarize, event sourcing is an architectural pattern that builds application states solely from domain events. It's best used in circumstances where one or more of the following is true. When you want a very thorough history of exactly what happened and how your state reached the current point. You want to view state as it was at a specific point in time. When events as a pattern are just a natural fit for your domain. Or you need highly performant systems that can handle large amounts of interactions. When compared to the complexity of ORMs and traditional methods, event sourcing is often simpler, requiring fewer lines of code and better expressing business intent. However, it's rarely used to build entire applications. It's best implemented where you want the benefits it brings. It requires more knowledge to implement, both about domain modeling and about the business itself. And finally, you will often need to pair it with the ideas from CQRS in order to create queryable models, bringing additional knowledge requirements. In each of these cases, the negatives come as part of the positives. So, look to implement event sourcing in domains that naturally maximize the positives and minify the negatives.